Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, June 4th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. We continue to track Cristobal, now weakened to a tropical depression as it has now been sitting inland over Central America for the last day or so, and this is going to spend at least one more day over land in all likelihood before it's able to come north and eventually back over water in the Gulf of Mexico sometime on Friday or early Saturday. Uh, it's currently centered somewhere near the northern uh, Guatemalan border with Mexico and we continue to see healthy rotation here. This could be important tomorrow to see just how much of this is left as it will continue decaying as it sits over the land, but whatever remains tomorrow will determine how it interacts with this larger gyre that we've been talking about, this monsoon gyre surrounding Crystal Ball that will all be coming north later. This is the water vapor satellite picture showing uh, the stark difference from a couple days ago where we now have all this dry air showing up in the Bay of Campeche where the storm once was and that's again because of an upper level trough that is now sitting over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico and as we described over the last couple of days a lot of dry air always exists always exists on the back sides of these troughs and so this is now getting punched down toward Crystal Ball which is centered here and to the opposite side of that on the east, we now have a lot of convection occurring on the eastern side of the monsoon gyre. We have very strong moist flow out of the southeast, bringing deep tropical moisture northward, facilitated by this upper level trough, which is now going to help drag this moisture even farther north into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And this is going to mean an outbreak of strong convection over the Yucatan Channel and adjacent areas during the next 24 to 48 hours. Now, how the different models handle crystal ball's evolution uh, kind of depends a lot on all of these things combined. And for example, this is the European model's handling of the situation. This is the initialization from this morning showing the storm down near Guatemala. By tomorrow morning, it starts lifting north. And the distinguishing feature of the Euro is that it still has a pretty intact vortex from Crystal Ball that has not fully dissipated, and so this simply gets steered north or northwest back over the water fairly far west compared to other models, and then is able to strengthen modestly, albeit broad, as it heads north toward what ends up being western Louisiana sometime on Monday. Compare that with the GFS, and what we have is a, a vortex that actually weakens considerably by Friday, less so than previous runs, but still weakening a little bit more and able to get absorbed into this larger monsoon gyre by tomorrow afternoon. And this ends up in a location that's a little bit farther toward the northeast compared to the European at this time because we have all this convection on the northeastern side of the monsoon gyre and once crystal ball dissipates, uh, we see something kind of reform. Uh, closer to the convective forcing within the broad gyre. And so this gyre lifts up faster and more toward the northeast than on the European, and we have a storm that's more toward New Orleans and sooner on Sunday afternoon instead of Monday afternoon. Other models have varying solutions more or less similar to these two models and they represent uh, the two most extreme solutions here. Euro is to the left and stronger, the GFS is to the right, faster and weaker with Crystal Ball. And to assess some other things going on here to see what might happen as this comes north over the Gulf, uh, we can look at the GFS moisture field and we noted this dry air here in brown on the water vapor satellite imagery. We can see it there right now. And as we've discussed, this is likely to get wrapped into whatever crystal ball is as it comes up into the Gulf. We can see this dry air wrap in on the model. This occurs on the European as well. And this is not a hard thing to see coming. This is likely to make this storm structure very sloppy and very asymmetric where we're likely to see a lot of precipitation and thunderstorms on the north and east side, a rather dry south side. And this may have more of a comma cloud type of appearance and maybe even a subtropical type of look to it instead of tropical. And as this comes north on the GFS, it really doesn't have enough time for this to change. We maintain kind of the comma cloud shape here right through the landfall time. And again, this is mostly rain to the north and east of the center and not a lot of wind threat with this. 991 millibars here, but this would not be an extremely strong tropical cyclone. Max winds in this kind of scenario would be maybe 50 or 60 miles per hour max uh, in this kind of situation. And then this comes ashore on Sunday and you'd have all the rain coming with it. 
On the Euro though, again, we have a little bit more time over water. It's still broad, but it has a little bit more time to potentially tighten up and become more tropical-like again with a central core of convection. It doesn't quite get there on the model, but it's a little stronger than the GFS because it has 18 to 24 extra hours over water because it's slower. Again, this is Monday, not Sunday, that the European has landfall. So this is going to be the big thing that we watch as this approaches what is expected to be Louisiana. How long does it stay over water? How slow is it to come up? We'll know a lot more about this tomorrow because the two models diverge as soon as tomorrow, and we'll know a lot in the morning about what crystal ball looks like. Uh, if we take a look at the steering as this is nearing the Gulf Coast, this is the other thing we talked about yesterday where we have this building ridge over the center of the country as Crystal Ball is sitting down in the Gulf. Now again, the European is slower. This is Sunday morning. Compared to the GFS at the same time, it is farther northeast on the GFS. And for this reason, as it comes up, uh, this ridge has less time to force the storm to bend left, which is expected to happen a little bit. So on the GFS, this hits New Orleans because it gets north faster. On the European though, this ridge is allowed to build in while the storm is still a little farther south. So on the European, it uh, tends to bend maybe a little bit more and ends up a little farther west over Louisiana or maybe even extreme eastern Texas on some of its ensemble members. Part of this is also because the European is much farther west to begin with tomorrow and the launching point of this system, is it here when it comes north or is it here when it comes north, will matter a lot. So where it's starting from will determine a lot of the ultimate landfall location. But it's important to remember that uh, this kind of storm structure that we're seeing on really both models, this kind of broad uh, comma-shaped kind of cloud as this comes ashore, uh, would facilitate a very broad area of impacts, not a focused wind core that causes a lot of wind damage, but instead a widespread area of heavy rainfall and potential for flash flooding, especially in areas that have already received a lot of rain. And we could see rain as far east as the Florida Peninsula, even though you're not in the current NHC forecast cone, which only depicts where the center is. So this could be a typical early season June system where we have a wide area of water impacts and potentially storm surge on low-lying areas of the coast, where this sub Otherly fetch pushes ocean water onto the coastline, but wind impacts are not currently expected to be a huge deal. There is a small range of possibilities for how strong the winds could get at the landfall point. It's not out of the question that this could become a hurricane, but right now the, the expectation is that this will stay below hurricane strength pending further developments. And that's what we have on the National Hurricane Center official forecast showing this general track toward the north and then a subtle bend toward the left at the end here, making landfall now later in the day on Sunday. And uh, the, the track has been getting slower. We did have landfall on late Saturday at one point on these forecasts. We have now shifted this to a Sunday landfall and we could see a little bit of some timing adjustments still, and this could wait until even Monday to make landfall, but impacts could arrive as early as early Sunday or even overnight on Saturday, and so again, be prepared for a wide swath of significant weather, even outside of this forecast cone, and especially to the east of where Cristobal's center is. Water expected to be the big deal here with the rainfall forecast for the next five days, showing several inches in excess of five inches over a wide area, extending from Louisiana all the way to Florida. Again, even if the center makes landfall here, could see heavy rain all the way over here. So wide area getting water and potential for flooding. That's the main concern with systems such as this one. And all the other details will continue to work out as we get closer to landfall time. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.